Hey everybody, this is Mr. Matt from the Pike Road Branch Library of the Montgomery City County Public Library System. It's time for another storybook time. Uh, first though, I want to say thank you to the people who responded to our last couple of storybook times that we posted on our Facebook page. Uh, thank you to Forrest who responded to my question about Swim Swim Sink, about what other flotation devices uh, the duckling might have used to help him float. Uh, Forrest said a life jacket, which was a good idea. And also thank you to David and Sophie for responding to my question about Mind Your Manners BB Wolf, where I asked, you know, did Wolf accidentally eat Gingerbread Boy at the end of the story? David said he did, and his sister Sophie said, uh-oh! So thank you for responding. I will have another question at the end of today's stories that you can uh, ask your grown-up to post in the comments when we're done so that I can uh, let you know that I'm reading those and mention your name for our next storybook time. Well, let's go ahead and do our hello song. Put our hello hands up here. Remember, hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Here we go. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Good job, give yourself a round of applause. We're also going to do our three verse song, and it goes like this. We're going to make the sign for love. Cross your arms, give yourself a hug. This means love. First verse is love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, yes I do. Now point to someone in your house that you love and say, that someone is you. Now the second verse is, go like this. It's jiggle like jelly, yes I will. Jiggle like jelly, yes I will. Jiggle like jelly, yes I will. Because I can't sit still. And the third verse is climb a ladder up so high. Climb a ladder up so high. Climb a ladder up so high until I reach the sky. And that's the sign for sky. So here we go. Cross your arms. First verse. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, yes I do. Love somebody, yes I do. And that someone is you. Jiggle like jelly, yes I will. Jiggle like jelly, yes I will. Jiggle like jelly, yes I will. Because I can't sit still. Climb a ladder up so high. Climb a ladder up so high. Climb a ladder up so high until I reach the sky. Good job. Give yourself a round of applause. All right. So our stories today are about the importance of friends, especially when things are kind of scary or you might feel lost, like actually lost, like at a store or outside, or just when things are a little scary around the house or in the world and you just need a friend or a family member to come and hug you and point you in the right direction to get you back where you need to go. So I'm calling this our Friends in Need Storybook Time. And our first story is about a little wolf cub. Um, his name is Wilf. And he thinks he's ready to lead the pack, but he gets lost, and he needs some new friends to help him find his way. This is called The Way Home for Wolf by Rachel Bright, with illustrations by Jim Field, and it was published by Scholastic Press. And I'm going to get a sip of tea, and we'll get started. The Way Home for Wolf. As a rainbow of lights flickered soft in the night, dusting diamonds of ice in a desert of white, the wild whipping wind, it whistled its tune to a howling of wolves and a shimmering moon. Can you howl like the wolves? Let's do it. Aroo! Would you do it? All right, good job. And the loudest in this echoing song was a wolfling called Wilf. 
at the heart of the throng. He loved to be fierce and longed to be grown. He liked to try everything all on his own. Look at me. I am big. I am tough, he would growl. While he showed off his strength and practiced his prowl. Now, do you see what he did there? Yeah, he knocked the head off of this snow wolf. And what's he prowling after there? It's a puffin. One night, it was time for the wolves to move on. New folks had moved in, and their shelter was gone. Can you see who the new folks are? Yeah, they're a polar bear, a polar bear mama and her polar bear cubs. <clears throat> so they left right away to find a new cave. They would have to walk fast. Oh, sorry. They would have to walk far, and they'd have to be brave. Let's go, shouted Wilf. I'm ready to lead. You're too small, laughed the wolves. It's an elder we need. One day, they advised, you will guide from the front. I suppose, muttered Wilf with a huff and a grunt. So you see where Wolf is? Yeah, he's in the very front of the pack. They struggled through snow as high as their flanks and leapt over rocks as they scaled icy banks. Wilf gave his all to keep pace and keep up, but strong-willed as he was, he was still just a pup. Now, do you see where Wolf is now? He was at the front of the pack, but now he's almost at the very back. He kept dropping back, with each clamber and climb, as the pack journeyed farther away all the time. Exhausted and breathless, he strayed off the track. When a blizzard blew in, and he lost his way back. Oh no, Wilf is lost. What's going to happen? Let's see. Wilf longed to howl, help, and to holler it loud. But his throat was too hoarse, and his heart was too proud. Do you know what that means, his heart was too proud? I think it means he thought he was being brave and like didn't want to ask for help, but he really needed to ask for help. So his heart was too proud. He lay on the tundra, his tail curled up tight, a blanket of stars was his bed for the night until... Now, do you see what's in the blanket of stars? It's the northern lights. It looks like there's like images of different animals throughout the, uh, the sky. So let's see if it has something to do with the story. He lay on the tundra, his tail curled up tight. A blanket of stars was his bed for the night, until... Crack! Went the ice. Crack and creak! Wilf jumped to all fours with a deafening shriek. He stuck out the claws on every limb. He had to hold on, because Wilflings can't swim. Then he fell and he fell, rolling and spinning. It felt like the end, but was just the beginning. Since somebody down there had heeded his scream, and she swooped from beneath like a watery dream. I'll help you, she called. Just reach for my horn. A majestic and magical sea unicorn. Now, is that actually a sea Unicorn? What do we call this animal? Yeah, it's a narwhal. It's a narwhal. Wilf's pride washed away and he stretched out a paw as she lifted him gently back onto the shore. Don't worry, she sung before dipping her brows. 
My friend Mr. Walrus will help you out now. And there, right behind him, a huge tusky fellow lifted his whiskers and let out a bellow. To the ridge, he proclaimed with his chin in the air. My friend Mighty Muskox will take you from there. And with waftings of fish, because that's what walruses like to eat, lots of fish, so he's probably got fish breath. With waftings of fish and a very loud snort, their journey was made, and their travel seemed short. Now, why do you think their travel seemed short? I think it's because he had a friend. When you have a friend going with you on a journey, things are more fun, and time passes, well, it seems to pass more quickly because you're having fun with a friend. And there, sure enough, on the ridge was the ox who took Wilf as far as his friend. Can you see what that is? Arctic fox who followed his nose through the trees to a... What is that? It's a goose. What sound does a goose make? Honk, honk, honk. So he followed his nose through the trees to a goose who guided him honking to... What is that? Remember, it's not a deer like we saw when I need a hug. It's got antlers. But it's also got a big snout. It's a moose. Led him to this ancient moose. The moose knew these wilds like no other soul. He was steady and true in pursuit of their goal. And as twilight closed in, Moose sang out a call to a flittering, fluttering, tiny fluff ball. Now this fluff ball was a new creature for me. Maybe it is for you. It is a bear moth. And there's a good look at the bear moth. I've never seen one before. It's a bear moth who showed Wilf the rest of the way to the place where this wolfling most wanted to stay. Now, who did Wolf want to get back to? That's right, his wolf pack. And there they are. Thank you, Wolf waved as he rejoined his pack, and the wolves howled with joy that their wolfling was back. They huddled him in and cuddled him close and fussed over which wolf had missed him the most. Wilf, he knew then, that when all come together, the darkest of times are easy to weather. So he bowed to the narwhal, ox, walrus, and goose, and vowed to the fox and the moth and the moose, if ever I meet one who strayed off their track, I'll help them along by guiding them back. And true to his word, Wilf is different now. And his world seems much smaller and warmer somehow. Since wherever life takes you, wherever you roam, we're all just a handful of friendships from home. And that's the end of The Way Home for Wolf by Rachel Bright, with pictures by Jim Field, and published by Scholastic. I love the message of this story, that you always have friends around you, and right now it may just be your family or your siblings, but when you're feeling lost or sad or lonely, they can kind of help guide you back to feeling happy and loved. So it's great that we can find friends that kind of become like family, and that we have family around us that loves us, especially when times are scary. And that's sort of the lesson of The Way Home for Wolf. So in like the same way that Wilf uh, was taken care of by his new friends, you can look for people to take care of uh, when you go out in the world again. And if they feel lost or lonely, you can help them too. So our next story is about another character who's feeling lost and lonely and scared. And this is a character we've read about before in our storybook times at the library and at Pikeford Elementary School and at Macon East Academy. This is about Bear. It's my favorite book series by Karma Wilson and Jane Chapman. And this story, Bear feels scared. He gets lost in the woods. And his friends have to go find him the same way that the friends found Wolf, uh, Wilf the Wolf in um, The Way Home for Wolf. 
And we're going to see what happens in Bear Feel Scared by Karma Wilson and Jane Chapman. It's published by Margaret K. McElderry Books. And get another sip of tea. Have a sip of a drink if you want to at home. Because there's a part in the story you're going to play, I want you to do at home, and you're going to keep the title of the story keeps coming up throughout the story. So every time it says Bear Feels Scared, I want you to say Bear Feels Scared. Here we go. In the deep dark woods by the strawberry veil, a big bear lumbers down a small crooked trail. Bear's tummy growls as he looks for a snack, but it's cold, 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 so the bear turns back. He is not yet home, he's not home yet when the sun starts to set. Here we go, all together. And the bear feels scared. Good job. Bear shakes and he shivers as a storm starts to howl. Bear mutters, what is that? Are there spooks on the prowl? The path grows dimmer and the sky grows gray. Bear looks to and fro, but he can't find his way. He huddles by a tree and wails, poor me. Here we go again. And the bear feels scared. And the bear feels scared. Meanwhile, back in the warm, cozy lair, friends start to worry for their poor, lost bear. It is late, Mouse squeaks, and our bear doesn't roam. There's a storm, cries Hare. Shouldn't bear be home? Wren tweets from his perch. We must all go search. What if Bear feels scared? The friends bundle up and begin to prepare. They form a search party for their lost friend, Bear. But Bear is all alone, and he sheds big tears. There's a noise in the forest, and he feels big fears. Bear trembles in the wind, how he longs for a friend, and the bear feels scared. Badger lights a lamp, and he shouts, let's go. All the birds search high, while the rest search low. With a flounce and a flutter, they set off together. They trudge down the trail through the wild, wet weather. They call, Ho Bear, are you there? Are you there? And the bear feels scared. Now, do you see Bear on this page? He's right there, just on the other side of these trees. Do you think they'll find him? Let's find out. <clears throat> but he perks up his ears. Is it Mole calling out? Is that Hare's voice? Does Bear hear him shout? Wren, Owl, and Raven all squawk from the sky. It is Bear! He is there! And they sigh. Big sighs. <clears throat> By a tree waits bear ten feet from his lair. Like he was actually really close to his home, but he got lost in the dark and in the bad weather. It's very sad. And the bear looks scared. 
scared. With a flap and a flurry, all the friends gather near. They give him bear hugs. They calm his bear fears. Later in the night, all clustered in a heap, the bear spins stories while his friends fall asleep. You know, sometimes after you're scared, the good way to feel better is to tell stories. Tell good happy stories and fun stories to take your mind off of it. And that's what Bear did for his friends. Take his mind off of being scared and to kind of calm down and get ready for bed. A good bedtime story. Later in the night, all clustered in a heap, the bear spins stories while his friends fall asleep. Cuddled up tight, they snore through the night, and the bear feels not scared anymore. The bear feels safe. So all of his friends came to find him. Now they're all huddled, huddled, cuddled together while the storm's going on outside and everyone is safe inside. That's such a great ending to that story. That was Bear Feels Scared by Karma Wilson and Jane Chapman, published by Margaret K. McElderry Books. This is a wonderful series of books with some great rhyming text and all of them. And I just love the characters in the art. That was Bear Feels Scared. So my question for today was going back to The Way Home for Wolf. Uh, what other animals do you think Wolf might meet in the next book? Um, he may have met you know, a, a muskox and the narwhal and um, the, the puffin and he met the, the bear moth. What other animals do you think uh, Wolf the Wolf might meet in another book? Um, tell your grown-up what animals do you think he might meet. And grown-ups, if you'll go ahead and post that in the comments, um, I'll mention those during our next storybook time that I record. Um, that's going to wrap it up for today. We're going to do our goodbye song, though. So let's put our goodbye hands up. We're going to go goodbye, friends, goodbye, friends, goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Here we go. Goodbye, friends, goodbye, friends, goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Give yourself a round of applause. Have a great day, and we will see you next time soon for another Storybook Time. Thanks very much for watching, and make sure you uh, share it, if you will, please, and comment if you have an idea about what other animals Wolf the Wolf might meet. Thanks very much. See you guys later. Bye-bye.